In this lecture, we're going to look at the main reactions carried out by haloalkanes. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to recall the conditions required for monohaloalkanes to react with alkalis to form alcohols, alcoholic alkoxides to form ethers, and ethanolic cyanide to form nitriles and carboxylic acids. You should also be able to recall the conditions required for monohaloalkanes to undergo an elimination reaction to form alkenes. When we were looking at the alkenes, the major reaction there was as an electrophilic addition reaction. Similarly, with haloalkenes, there's one major reaction type, and it's a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And this is because the carbon halogen bond tends to be very polar. So this bond here is a very polar bond with the halogen being far more electronegative than the carbon. So the halogen is slightly po negatively polar and the carbon is a slight positive charge. So this means that the carbon is very likely to be attacked by a nucleophile. So there's some random nucleophile. It's going to attack that carbon, forming a bond between the carbon and the nucleophile and the CX bond will break with both electrons going on to the halogen to form the halide ion. So the product of this reaction would be plus Br minus. Okay. So the overall reaction is very simple. You swap the nucleophile for the halogen. Okay. And through this reaction, we can make lots of different types of organic uh, compounds, which makes the, halo the haloalkanes a really useful starting material for making a wide range of different products, because we can just swap this halogen for all sorts of different nucleophiles. Okay. We're going to look at three reactions. In the first case, if our nucleophile is a hydroxide ion, right, so we swap the carbon, sorry, swap the halogen for the nucleophile, which is OH minus, and we make an alcohol. So we can easily turn the haloalkanes into alcohols. The second one we're going to look at is when the nucleophile is a cyanide ion. So again, we swap the halogen for the CN. And this is called a nitrile. Okay. This is a nitrile. This was an alcohol. And the third one we're going to look at, oops, let's do that in blue. The third one we're going to look at is when the nucleophile is something called an alkoxide ion. So it's an alkyl group attached to the oxygen with a negative charge. And again, just get rid of the halogen and stick on the OR group. I said this has been some alkyl group, methyl, ethyl, propyl, whatever. And this is uh, another bunch of compounds that you haven't come across yet called ethers. So I just want to look at these three reactions in a wee bit more detail, but they have an awful lot in common. It's so basically you just substitute the halogen for the nucleophile. Okay, so look, let's look at the first one which we produce an alcohol. So our nucleophile is OH minus, bond formed between the oxygen and the uh, carbon, that bond breaks, and we produce our alcohol plus our bromide ion. Okay, incredibly useful reaction. Not only do we produce an alcohol, but we know from 
our higher work can we'll revisit that again later on in the synthesis section. This alcohol, we could oxidise it to turn it into an aldehyde. This is a primary alcohol. If it was a secondary alcohol, we could it would turn into a ketone. If it's tertiary, it wouldn't oxidise. And if it was an aldehyde, we could further oxidise that to produce a carboxylic acid. So there's a huge range of compounds that we can make from the simple haloalkane by doing the nucleophilic substitution with hydroxide ion. So initially you produce the alcohol, which then if we require can oxidise to the aldehyde, or ketone maybe, and then further oxidise to carboxylic acid. So what you really, you need to be aware that you can do all this and the exact conditions under which this reaction takes place. So the conditions which you have to remember, the hydroxide ion you'd get by say having potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide, let's just say KOH, dissolved in water. Okay? So dissolved in a, well, made up a solution by dissolving it in water. Okay, so quite simple. But although you don't need to know the mechanism, you should be aware that even without the KOH, just water itself could produce the alcohol. And that's important because in the other two reactions we look at, we need to make sure there's no water present or we can form the alcohol by nucleophilic substitution. So this is the only one in which water is going to be involved. Okay, the second one was nitrile formation. Uh, and this is nitrile, okay, so this C triple bond N here. So, again the mechanism is just identical. The nucleophile attacks the carbon, the halogen bond breaks. And we replace the halogen with our CN. So, the exact conditions required for this. Well, the cyanide ion, again, be potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide. Let's put up sodium, sorry, potassium cyanide. But we don't want it to be dissolved in water. Otherwise, you get an alcohol formed. So it's dissolved in ethanol, and it's usually referred to as ethanolic potassium cyanide. So there's no water present. Right, nitriles we haven't come across a great deal, and they're not that useful, but what we can do is, again, there's a further reaction we can do. So, you can carry out on the nitrile a hydrolysis reaction using acid, and that breaks this molecule up here, okay? And you would produce, in this case, a carboxylic acid. Okay. Now, what's interesting is, the first one we looked at, producing an alcohol and then oxidising it, would also produce a carboxylic acid. But the advantage of doing this method is that your carboxylic acid has one extra carbon. So we started off with bromo, one bromoethane. Okay. The other method would end up with ethanoic acid, but because we've added in an extra carbon, here we've got propanoic acid. So if you're wanting to extend the length of the chain, this is a good way to do it. Okay. So, important to remember, the initial nucleophilic substitution is carried out by ethanolic potassium cyanide, and then Further hydrolysis of the product using acid will produce a carboxylic acid with a chain length one greater than the initial haloalkane. Right, the third one we're going to look at is ether formation. Okay, so this is what ether looks like. Two alkyl groups joined together with an oxygen. Okay, so a bit like an ester when you don't have the C double bondo as well. So, reaction in this case should be, let's stick with that as being our haloalkane, and the nucleophile would be the 
that. So the nucleophile attacks the carbon, that breaks, and we end up with the CH3, CH2, or CH2, CH3. And of course we could change what the alkoxide was. Uh, this is an ethyl alkoxide. We could use the methyl, propyl, whatever. Okay. So this, this thing here is called the alkoxide. And again, you want to have it dissolved in alcohol, not water. I just briefly mentioned how you make this in the first place, although we'll come across this again when we do our section on ethers. You produce the alkoxide by reacting an alkali metal, usually sodium or potassium, with your alcohol. So in this case, it was ethanol and you produce your K plus CH3, CH2 or minus, so your potassium ethoxide plus a half H2 gas. Okay. So by reacting an alkali metal with the appropriate alcohol, you make your alkoxide ion, which then is your nucleophile, which carry out your substitution reaction to produce your ether. Okay, so quite a lot of details to remember in this section. Okay, so that's the three nucleophilic substitution reactions, and they are the predominant reaction that we'll talk about when doing, looking at the reactions of haloalkanes. But under certain conditions, it can do one other type of reaction, and that is an elimination reaction. And it will undergo an elimination reaction if it's attacked by a strong base which is dissolved in alcohol as opposed to water. So here's a haloalkane, react with potassium hydroxide and ethanol, you get an elimination reaction with the Cl and one of the hydrogens removed and a double bond being produced there. So, you need to watch out for what potassium hydroxide is dissolved in. Yeah. So, if your potassium hydroxide is dissolved in water, you get a nucleophilic substitution reaction. If your potassium hydroxide is dissolved in ethanol, you get an elimination reaction. Okay. Slightly confusing, of course, for the other nucleophilic substitution reactions, you have your potassium uh, cyanide or your alkoxide ion dissolved in ethanol. That gives you a substitution reaction. For, for potassium hydroxide, water, you get the substitution. Ethanol, you get the elimination. So you have to try and remember that. So that's the reactions of the haloalkanes. We're now in our final section, we'll look at uh, the mechanisms of uh, the substitution reactions in a wee bit more detail. So by now you should be able to recall the conditions required for monohedral alkanes to react with alkalis to form alcohols, so that's something like potassium hydroxide dissolved in water, alcoholic alkoxides to form ethers, so again that's an alkoxide ion dissolved in ethanol, and ethanolic cyanide to form nitriles, which can then be hydrolyzed to produce carboxylic acids. You should also be able to record the conditions required for monohaloalkanes to undergo an elimination reaction from alkenes. That was a strong base like potassium or sodium hydroxide dissolved in ethanol.